If you're struggling to link tables correctly inside of Airtable, then this video is for you. We're going to be going step by step through the very process that we use with our clients in setting up their databases correctly. So if that's of interest to you, you're in the right place. Stick around and let's get into the good stuff. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, consulting group that helps businesses get automated and organized using Airtable and Zapier. Now in this video, as I mentioned, we're going to be going into the most critical success uh, indicator inside of Airtable, and that is understanding how to properly link your data. And listen, before we get into it, I need to you know, emphasize how important this is because the reality is if you're using Airtable like a regular spreadsheet, like it's Excel, you're missing out on the great functionality of the software, which is really the ability to link to related data. So without further ado, let's jump on into my screen and set one of these up on our own. So when we set a, sit down to uh, build a new database, you know, if we're starting from scratch, this is exactly what we see, you know, just one table without uh, a name and, and we just have these three fields. And let's go ahead and create an example here where we have, uh, you know, we're, we're building out a database and we're going to think through the different steps of do we need this to be a new table or not? Because the most common thing that I see used incorrectly in Airtable, I find that people build new tables as if they would build a new sheet inside of Excel. And the reality is you can most often keep that data in one place. Uh, I'll give you an example. I had a client once uh, who had three different locations and each location that they had, they created a different table for. When in reality, all that data could have lived in one table because it was the same type of data. And so they could have kept it in one table and instead broken it out based on a status or a location indicator. So in this example, let's imagine that we have uh, you know, consult, uh, we have a consulting practice where we uh, have contacts and then we have consultations with people in those contacts and then we also set up uh, you know, some sort of billing for those contacts based on uh, that, uh, those consultations. So let's take a look at how we might envision that. So of course, if we, at the high level there, we might have our, uh, our uh, contacts. And as we mentioned, another, uh, another part of this would be the consultations that we have with our contacts. And the last part of this might be uh, invoices sent to the contacts. So a couple of things to uh, think about here is how this data is related. Does the invoice belong to the contact or does it belong to the consultation? Do we charge for every consultation? If so, maybe the invoice belongs to the consultation. Or in some cases, maybe we have free consultations so the invoices aren't charged for. Another big thing that we need to address is how did we determine these tables? So let's get into that part first. The way we determine these different tables first and foremost is, is it a, a unique set of data or is it a point of data that lives inside of another data set? Give you an example of this. Invoices belong to contacts because each contact we would uh, send an invoice to. One or more invoices go to a contact. And so invoices could be just a, a part within the contacts. So let's imagine we have you know, different examples here of contacts. I'll use my own name uh, for this example. Let's suppose I'm the co a contact inside of this database. Well, we could create something that has invoice numbers with, let's suppose, a multi-select dropdown. And this would be, let's say, op, uh, you know, invoice 1001 and invoice 1002. And this could go on forever, of course. And we could select which of these invoices belong to each contact inside of the contacts table. This is how we would put this in a spreadsheet, right? But when we're getting into the nitty gritty of what makes Airtable awesome, it's that relational database part. And so if we're gonna really tap into that, what we want to do is create a new set of data called invoices. And the value in this is that when we drop into the invoices table, we're gonna have more information on each invoice. So rather than having this multi-select dropdown, whereas in this example, invoice is a data point inside of 
the data set of contacts. Instead, we're going to have invoices as their own data set. And so in this example, let's suppose we had invoice numbers. That's going to be the leftmost column, which we call the primary field. The primary field is where we, um, where we use a, a unique identifier in order to uh, make each one of these records uh, unique. And so in this case, we might have the invoice number because each number is a unique identifier for that invoice, right? So we've got these three examples of invoices. And now what other data points do we collect at the invoice level? Well, each invoice, of course, will have an amount, let's say. How many, you know, how, what's the value of that invoice? We'll have the, uh, the date that the invoice was uh, sent. And of course, uh, we'll have a date that the invoice is paid. And then, how do these invoices tie back to contacts? And this is where we're going to set up the linked relationship. And so the first step of that is, of course, naming the field as we have done, contacts. And now we're going to go down and select the type of data that lives in this field. And in this case, it's a link to another record. So we're going to link to a record, and you'll see here that we have the options before us to either create a new table or to link to one of our pre-existing tables. In this case, we want to link to contacts. Now we have to answer a couple of questions in terms of how we want this data to be linked. Do we want to allow multiple records to be linked in the same place? And this has to do with uh, the relationship type between invoices and contacts. If an invoice can be sent to multiple contacts, one invoice can be sent to multiple contacts, then we would say that we want this to be linked to multiple records. But in the case of an invoice, each single invoice only goes to one specific contact. So we're going to turn this part off. The other part that we can do is limit the selection to a view. This is a bit more advanced, and we have some other videos that are specific to this case. So I'll let you find those. Uh, I'll post something over here that you can, uh, can check out. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and leave this for now and allow that link to be established. And the important part of establishing a link is the reciprocal part of this relationship. That is to say, when we connect invoices to contacts, the opposite must also be true. If, if contacts are connected to invoices, invoices must be connected to contacts and vice versa. So in this case, now that we've created this connection here to the contacts table, this connection is created automatically. And we can go in here and refine this a little bit. So now we have to go through the same logical questions. Can one contact have multiple invoices? And of course, the answer to that is yes. We could send num any number of invoices to one client or contact. So we'll keep this on in this example. And now we'll get rid of our multiple select field. And if we send that invoice, we can now create this here, 1001. And so now when we go back to invoices, we've established the relationship between this invoice and this contact. And you see that when we link that data in one place, it pulls through to all the different sections. So we could imagine that if we had an invoice amount, let's say $5,000, that invoice could be sent on March 10th. Perhaps it was paid on you know, March 15th. Great. Now there's this is awesome stuff to track because not only are we keeping track of the data, but we also have this interconnected database, or as we call it, a relational database. And it's very easy now to go back in the, in the future. We can come back to this and check on the invoices that went out to each client, how long it took each invoice to be paid, etc. Let's build something similar to consultations. So perhaps we have a model where we also have consultations that are uh, not uh, paid for. So like, for example, the model of our company, uh, we have free consultation options for people who are looking to perhaps secure our services. And on those calls, we prove our worth before we uh, submit a proposal uh, in, in many cases. And so in this example, let's suppose that people were signing up for different consultations. And there would be, of course, the date of consultation. And we can set that here. Let's go ahead and get rid of these blank records and just create one. Let's suppose we had a new consultation scheduled for, I don't know, Wednesday of next week. 
And in this example, of course, a contact would need to be present for that consultation. So again, we need to build that relationship to the contacts. So again, we name the field type and we choose to link to another record. And we're going to pull that information back from contacts or create a new table. In this case, we want to pull it back. And we're going to link here and again, go through the logic. In this case, a single consultation will be held with a single contact. And so we will not allow linking to multiple records here. However, the reciprocal relationship, which you see is automatically created, this we will allow to link to multiple records because perhaps we have multiple consultations with one contact. Let's go ahead and set that up and what that might look like. So let's suppose we had a consultation scheduled for uh, with this contact on this date. Well, we could take notes, of course, and whatever other uh, data points we wanted to collect, we could include them here uh, in other fields of this um, consultation. So maybe we have a question where we are determining internally if this, uh, if this contact is a good fit for our services or you know, any number of different things that we might uh, take into consideration here. So whatever, whatever those different data points are, those data points live at the data set level. And so the data points become our columns and the data set is the table. And so we then want to give this a unique name. We can call this the primary ID, which is what it is. And in many cases, what I prefer to do here is use a formula that's going to be a concatenation, which is to say a combination of multiple uh, strings. And in this case, I might take the uh, date, but I'll first uh, wrap it with a date time format. And then I will add on top of that the contact's name. And in between here, of course, give it a bit of a separator. See if I got that formula right. And so now this has a unique name. The, the value to, to doing this, where we can concatenate multiple pieces of data into one primary key, is let's suppose this same contact were to schedule another consultation with us, we would want to keep those separate. And so it's quite easy to see which of these consultations is which, by the primary key here. And you'll see that once we establish that relationship again in one place, it's automatically going into the other place as well. So if you are getting stuck when you're setting up your database, the big question to ask yourself is, is the thing that I'm discussing right now a data point or a data set? A data point is one specific piece of information that lives inside of a greater data set. A data set is a large amount of information with multiple data points. So think micro or macro. If there are a lot of different things that you need to track on each level, for example, with an invoice, you've got a date, or two dates, date sent, date paid, amount, who is responsible for paying it, that's a data set. Invoices are the data set. Each point inside of that, date it was sent, who's in charge of paying it, all of those things, those are the data points belonging to that data set. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did, please be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss out on future Airtable content. We release new videos once a week. And if there's any more advanced work that we might be able to help you out with, be sure to swing by our website and check out a lot of the resources we have there and uh, maybe even schedule a call and we can chat and uh, get into the good stuff with you. In the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.